the leader of an industry. More than a business is perhaps one of the most powerful brands that are out there. When we think about a plastic container, we think of Tupperware. We even used the name Tupperware to name other brands, other storage containers that we saw that we see out there. But nothing lasts forever. 2023, Tupperware has issued a going concern, meaning that they don't know if they will remain in business or if they will go bankrupt. But how did Tupperware got to this point from being one of the most respected brands in the world with the most profitable business to a going concern? This is Tupperware's financial analysis made with Python. You can find the Python code used to make this analysis in the description down below in the Jupyter Notebook. To start off, how did Tupperware got to have a, such a good brand? Well, it used a model of uh, distributor selling, which means that they don't sell the, the product directly to the consumers, but rather to a fleet of sellers that is in charge of selling those products for a commission fee. Uh, this model helped, helped them uh, gain reputation at the beginning due to housewives and parties that promoted the product a lot and thanks to its high quality which are products that are made to last forever it's the it's what allowed them to keep a uh, high prices for so many years as we, as we can see in this image over here the competition has very low prices compared to them five storage containers of Gladware are worth eight dollars while the same amount of containers of Tupperware are eighty dollars and for that amount of Tupperware's eighty dollars you can get a bunch of storage containers from Rubbermaid which is a huge difference in price with more eco-friendly products out there like hard books, storage containers and sable bags uh, storage containers of plastic like Tupperware's are having more substitutes which is a threat to them now the for so many years Tupperware's revenue had been having a top a upwards trend but for the last couple of years this has not been the case due to consumer change demand preferring these more eco-friendly products and not seeing the value on such a high price difference between Tupperwares and Rubbermaids or Gladwares, consumer demand is decreasing. As we can see in the graph right now on the screen, this is Tupperwares revenue year over year. They had an upward trend towards 2014, where it started to decline consistently, especially in 2017, which had a very steep decline. Overall, since 2014, they've been they've having they've had a decrease in sales of 38 percent. And if we see the 2022 financial statements that are unaudited, the revenue has decreased from 1,600 million to 1,300, a decrease of 30 of 300 million of 18 percent. This is a very bad situation for Tupperware but do you say well if they have good operating and net profit margins there there's no issue well that's the issue even though they have a really high gross profit margin of around 65 percent on average as you can see the graph right here it's operating and net profit are have seen more volatility lately in this last couple of years due to that uh, change in demand on the customer, on the consumer side. Especially in 2017, where they even reported a loss on net profit. Uh, but still, on the years that they do have a profit, it's not as high as it could be. As we can as in the last couple of years, it averaged to a 1%. And the highest it gets is around 6%. And if we see the 2022 financial statement 
the situation gets worse. As you can see right here, in 2022, they reported a net loss of 14 million. This is not a good situation for them. 14 million for top of world on net losses, which of course has a negative impact in cash. Because what what keeps a business going is its cash flow. And some businesses have the favorable situation. They have a working capital that is positive, meaning they, they first collect their revenue, you know, the cash inflow, and then they pay the suppliers or then they pay the inventory. But this is not the case for Tupperware as they have a capital funding gap of 97 days. These are three months of operations that they have to finance their way through. And there's the big difference between Tupperware and his, its competitors. Why did its competitors, even though they also had a decrease in revenue this 2022, as we can see on Newell's brand financial statements right here. And of course, it's decreased on global demand, but still, it needs something else for them to be a going concern. And at that, it's its capital structure. To fund their working capital, they've always used liabilities since 1996, where around 30% was only shareholders' equity. And they've managed to keep that a normal, an average percentage of that, of uh, 8%, 10% of shareholders of equity. But since 2013, where revenue started to decrease and had a, a decrease in demand, they did not adjust properly at time and had to recur to more liabilities to fund its operations. As so we can see, it's starting to be close to 90%, 90% of capital structure on liabilities or on debt, depending on the case. That meant in this couple of years when they were very close to being 100% financed by liabilities, they were a very risky company because this prevents, even though li liabilities and debt are cheaper than equity, it's also riskier as you have a higher financial leverage and to the eyes of a creditor, it's not good. You don't have a good uh, credit rating for Moody's or any other organization. So this means that they, you also have higher interest expense and a higher interest effective rate. And as we can see on the last couple of years, in 2017, due to the net loss, the situation got worse. Their, their shareholders' equity, it's negative, meaning that they don't have shareholder equity. Liabilities, they owe more than they own. They have more liabilities than assets in the last couple of years, which is a very risky situation, and especially on the solvency side, which means that anything that goes bad to business will affect them tremendously as they have a high degree of financial leverage. If you got that, the expensive interest rates that, allow them, that does not allow them to have a higher net profit, as we can see here, the, the gap between the gross profit, the operating profit, sorry, and the net profit is a bit high. That's due to the 2% interest rate that they have and the effective tax rate, which is also very high for them. An important thing worth mentioning is that interest rates are also increasing globally right now, which is not good for them in business. So a global decrease in demand, threat of substitutes, comp competitors which are very suited for consumer needs today, a distribution selling method, which means that they have uh, they, they depend on the fleet of sellers, which in 2022 they do not and they, they they had a decrease they reported a decrease on the fleet of seller its capital structure with a high degree of financial leverage means that they are in a very rough situation 
And that's why they don't know if they're going to keep going. If we see Tupperware's statement of cash flow, they reported a decrease of cash flow in 2022 of 153 million. So they do not only need cash to fund its working capital needs, but to fund its liabilities, its debt. And you may ask as a solution, well, refinance. They already did. In 2021, they refinanced a new credit revolving facility with cheaper interest rates. So that card has been played. So what for Tupperware now? Where should they go? For Tupperware now, they've acquitted of the the they contacted financial advisors to try and get the short-term liquidity. And what they were trying to do in their only solution, perhaps, is to sell its property plan of equipment. If we see its balance sheet right here, its property plan of equipment represents 235 million dollars which is basically uh, its cash equivalents so selling its property cloud equipment or its properly plan its property plan and equipment or other fixed assets or leasing them at least will get the company some liquidity on the short term but that is easier said than done as fixed assets are the hardest thing to sell for a company and if they manage to sell them perhaps it is due to urgency with a price discount so what can we learn from Tupperware's situation well first it is to always know your consumer with their meth distributor method they did not know or they did not have a lot of feedback from its customers they did not know how the demand was going to go and so they could not adjust properly. Recently, in 2021, they started the turnaround plan to get a more customer-centric uh, business, but that is not enough, or it's too late. It was too late already. Another thing to learn from top of our situation is to keep an eye on leverage. High degrees of leverage will force the company to be on tie as you as all the money you get will be used to repay your old debt and you even get debt to pay all that number two pay a close eye to your financial leverage in top of our situation they rely too heavily on liabilities on and on debt and if they will recur to shareholders' equity as another uh, form of finance, even though it was very expensive, this wouldn't have happened to them. 